Okay, so let's break down this question. So first of all, what we've got is a velocity time graph. So there's a couple of things to note before we even get started. There's a velocity time graph, that means the area under the graph is your displacement, obviously, and the gradient of your graph is going to be the acceleration, because that's the rate of change of the velocity. So let's break this down into sections. So let's just move this across so we can get nice and detail into it. The first part we're going to look at is this section here. Now the first thing to notice is in that section here, the graph is moving away from the x-axis. So what that means mean is that it is accelerating. The magnitude of the velocity is getting greater. Okay. And the key thing to notice is that it's a straight line, or it's got constant gradient, which means it's a constant acceleration. Okay, so that's that section of the graph. Let's move on into the next section. So, let's just put this bit here, and, and let's draw in the next. Next bit we're going to look at is this section along the top here. So this flat section of the graph. Now what you'll notice if you look over the axis is that velocity for this time is staying the same. So what you've got there is a point where it's going along at constant velocity, so which means the acceleration must be zero because the velocity is not changing. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. What we've got here is the downward section of the graph. Now the key thing to note is, is that it's approaching the x-axis, so it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis, which means the magnitude of the velocity is going down, which means it must be decelerating. Okay, so we've got this section here where it's decelerating, and again we've got a constant gradient because it's a straight line graph, which means it must be at constant deceleration as it's going down. Okay, so let's move on to this bottom section of the graph. So, what we're going to look at next is this section here. Now, the first thing to notice is that, again, it's moving away from the x-axis. So that must mean that it's accelerating for this section here. And again, it's a straight line graph, constant gradient, so it's constant acceleration. Now the key thing to note here is obviously it's moving away from the x-axis in the opposite direction to the way it did before, because before what we had over here it was going away in the positive direction, but over here what we have is it's actually going away in the negative direction. So what you can say is it's a constant acceleration and it's in the opposite direction. Okay, that's one of the key things, and I'm just sort of the most common mistake I saw with this one is not actually mentioning that it was in the opposite direction. So to finish it off, let's have a look at this last section of the graph. So if we do have a look at this section here, oh, there's a bit of a wonky line there, but it's a straight line here. So this line is going along at constant velocity. So if we look over at the y or oh, velocity axis here, you can see it's at minus two the whole way along. So that must mean it's a constant velocity again, so just like the upper section of the graph, or zero acceleration. And then let's look at the final part of the graph, this one over on the far right hand side. Now the key thing to notice is it's approaching the x-axis, so it's going towards the x-axis. So that must mean that it is decelerating, okay? because the, the magnitude of the velocity is getting smaller. Okay, so it's decelerating again. It's a straight line graph with constant gradient, so it's decelerating. It's got constant deceleration at that point. Okay, and then obviously this graph finishes up at this point here, where it is at zero velocity, so it must therefore be stationary at that final point. And that is how to answer that question.